Our knowledge in the field of cancer is currently advancing at an extremely rapid rate. Traditionally, we've tried to target cancer cells just because they're stronger and they grow faster. But the unfortunate consequence of that is there's a lot of uh, casualties on the side and the normal tissues get targeted as well. I've been lucky enough to be involved in a number of research situations over the years. And there have been a few times where you've seen something that you know is something that just changes the landscape. As in all of life, in medicine, there are inflection points, and we're at a very important inflection point now. Personalized medicine is the key to providing the best chance of cure to our cancer patients. The idea here is to maximize the likelihood that the treatment you'll give the patient will be successful, and at the same time, try to minimize whatever toxicities the patient may have to go through to, to achieve a good result. The notion that we're going to be able to better target our patient's tumors and relieve them of the suffering from chemotherapy is really what gives us the most hope. Instead of randomly treating a thousand patients with this new interesting drug, you can pick the 200 patients where because of the basic science, you have more of an expectation that it might work. Part of the promise of personalized medicine is the opportunity to transform a scary diagnosis of cancer into a chronic illness that can be managed relatively easily. There are many advantages to having the focal point of our personalized medicine program be within the Reed Family Innovative Therapeutics Unit. By having pharmacy and nursing staff and study coordinator staff all in one center, as well as our translational research lab, we're gonna provide much better service to our patients. It's the highest level of expertise, um, but in the most comforting, nurturing environment. Each year we feel that we have more and more to offer our patients. As this continues, our knowledge and our ability to care for cancer patients will also grow by leaps and bounds. So this is really an exciting opportunity and a really exciting moment in cancer care. Whether one has never had cancer, whether one has active cancer, or whether one has thankfully cancer in their past, but is free of cancer now, uh, this concept of personalized medicine can still uh, mean everything in the world to you. Nature is a big thing for me, just being outside, seeing the trees. I get a lot of pleasure out of planting and seeing everything pop up and say, I'm growing and it's beautiful. We've always loved camping. And we like to take off for a long weekend and just um, throw the dogs in, throw some food in. That's one of our family passions. When I first heard that I had cancer and I had a rare cancer, it was so shocking to me. I, I couldn't believe it because I've always been really healthy. I hardly ever go to a doctor. It's so surreal. This can't be me. I'm healthy, I'm busy. You know, it was just a shock. They did a biopsy and um, I started chemo the next day. When you're diagnosed with cancer, the first thing you think about is your care. I had heard that Swedish was a good place to be to get your cancer treated, and I had heard that Dr. Wall would be somebody to talk to if I wanted to move ahead with something besides just the standard, which is all I had gotten so far. When I first saw Dawn, she had relapsed again, and she had stage four disease, so it's unfortunately incurable. She was fortunately, though, not symptomatic, so she had a little bit of time to decide how to approach treating her disease again, with her main goal being to be well as long as possible. The first thing we started talking about is what else is out there, what other possibilities there are, and we started looking into um, different studies that possibly I could do. Don is very interested in a new group of drugs that aren't FDA approved yet, called PARP inhibitors 
And we had a trial with one in particular that she met criteria for. Susan was faced with a situation where if we didn't do something that was successful, life is going to get very ugly very quickly. With any type of cancer, time is of the essence. Time is really important because you are racing against the cancer developing. I decided to send off some genetic evaluations for her and see if we can find any mutations for which we have drugs that might be useful. When I met with Dr. Kaplan and we looked at the results of the genetic testing, that's when think, like the game changed for me. There were a number of options and it was like hope. You know, it was hope and it was light. Being on this clinical trial, being at Swedish, being with Dr. Wall, I feel like what I want is being done. And together we, we made the choice. I didn't know what would happen. And within like a month, it just melted away all these tumors. I really had a miracle. When I got this last CAT scan and I looked at her and I said, I am I going into remission? And she said, yes, you're going into remission. And you could go into full remission. So no hope a year ago, all the hope in the world today. It's really exciting that we're looking to open an investigational trials unit and to really advance our involvement in phase one trials to get more and more of these agents into the hands of our patients when we need them. Swedish is going to be right at the forefront of allowing and giving their patients the best possible care that's out there, period. I think the thing that's helped me the most with this journey is kind of coming back to now, I'm alive. Right now, I'm alive. I was planning my death. I've been planning my death for the last two years. And once I started seeing what's going on, I'm planning my life again. I have my girls, I have my boys and my husband, and I feel like I'm moving forward again instead of backwards. <laughs>